All right, today we're gonna to be showing you how to remodel a bathroom. This is one of those DIY jobs that not very many people realize they can very easily do themselves. There's no reason you need to spend thousands of dollars and have somebody do this for you when you can do it yourself there. So what we're going to be doing in this job here is we're gonna be replacing all the tile, we're gonna to be replacing the toilet, and we're gonna be replacing the vanity. Obviously, there's some tools that are required, you know, to make this happen here. I'll walk through the necessary tools on each step that you need in order to, you know, do this. But without further ado, you know, let's get to it. So the first step that we need to do, you know, is to lay some protective things around the areas that you're going to be walking through. Obviously, you don't want to be tracking a bunch of, you know, dirt and debris. And when you get into the tile, you know, mortar, et cetera, there all over your house. What I found useful over the years is this builder's paper. This is at any local hardware store. I'll post some links below in the descriptions of where you can find some of this. This stuff is pretty cheap. You know, you get a whole roll of this. You know, this one here is 140 feet and it's you know, typically like $15. Or you can obviously use some of the plastic that you can lay down as well. The problem I found with the plastic is essentially it's a trip hazard, right? This stuff's always moving around and it's just not as easy as this stuff here is. So I re recommend this, you know, this builder's paper here. So what you do is you just simply roll this stuff out. Then you're gonna get some uh, simple masking tape and then you're going to just simply be masking off you know the corners now obviously you can save some of the tape and only do certain areas but as you see if you tape the entire area it's going to be more secure and it's less of a trip hazard so after we have some of the builder's paper down on the ground obviously this doesn't have to look neat you know it's just there for protection the next step is if you have one of these transitions usually you gotta get something under there and those usually just pop out like that. This one was just already kind of loosened up for me, but essentially you have to get something and pry that up there. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the door. Depending on your circumstances there, you may or may not have to remove the door, but obviously when you're, usually when you're in smaller bathrooms, you know, this thing's just gonna get in your way during the process. So a lot of times it's easier just to remove it. All you need to do this is a simple little punch and a hammer. You can get away with using a screwdriver as well, but you're essentially all you're doing is putting it down here below like this, and you're gonna pound it up until that pin comes out. And then you're gonna have three of those on here. So pound each one of them out like that. Then once those are out, you can either, you know, take it off yourself or use a lot of times it's better to have a partner that's here to help you to kind of you know, get the door off. Cause sometimes these doors are heavy there. All right, so the next step we're going to be removing the toilet. The first thing you want to make sure you do is you turn off the water. So there's usually a valve underneath your toilet there. So just go ahead and turn that, that water off. And what I usually do is I flush the toilet just to get any of the remaining water out of the toilet so you're not dealing with that when you remove it. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the plastic nuts that are on here. Usually there's a couple on there, so unscrew them. If you can see you down notice down here, you know, have some towels or something handy because there is going to be a little water out of this tank that's going to come out here as well. So get those loosened up and twist that out. After you have it loosened up down there, you know, obviously make sure you've got your drain pan and some towels down there as well. Go ahead and pull this in here straight up like that. All right, so the last thing we need to do here to get the toilet out is we need to unbolt it from the floor. To do that, you're just gonna get a flathead screwdriver, come underneath here, pop that cap off, and there's gonna be a nut on there. Just go ahead and twist that off. And there's gonna be one on each side there. So go ahead and remove both of those. So just repeat that same process on the other side and remove the other bolt as well. All right, so now that we got both of the bolts removed, now we can go ahead and lift this uh, toilet out. You're essentially just gonna pull this thing straight up. A lot of times it's easier with two people. If it's one person, you're not able to lift it by yourself. You can always remove the back of the tank here and do uh, in two pieces there. It'll, it'll be a little bit lighter there for you. One other note, as far as any residual water you have in here, sometimes it's easier just to get a wet shot back. Shot back it either so you're not, you know, dripping toilet water all through your house there. So then once you're ready there, then just go ahead and lift this straight out. All right, so now that you have the toilet removed, the next thing you can do is, you know, just stuff some towels or something in here to keep some of that sewer gases coming out. And also this prevents anything from unnecessarily falling down in the drain. So just go ahead and just plug that up, something like that. Then you're done with removing the toilet. So now we're ready to remove the vanity sink. Obviously this process can be different depending on what vanity you're trying to remove there. So same thing over here, you're gonna first wanna close these water valves on both sides. Then there's simply going to be a nut on the top, you know, that you're gonna to loosen up. 
Now, when you're doing this, pay attention to this because you could have to see pipes down here. You don't want to get carried away with cranking this one way or the other because you can snap it off. So always kind of support the end like this while you're turning this nut here. And that prevents that from putting an unnecessary bind on this that you could potentially crack a water line there. So go ahead and remove both the hot and the cold water lines. So then next you can remove the cap on here for the drain. And those usually just twist off like that. Then what that's gonna allow you to do, that's gonna allow you to pull that drain straight out of the wall here when you remove your vanity. And now we're gonna remove the fasteners that are fastening to your sink or your vanity to the wall and the floor. Now again, this can be different based on what you're dealing with there. On this one, there's simply some threaded bolts that are on the back side of this going to the wall. On a regular standard vanity, usually you're gonna see some screws on the back going into the wall and sometimes screws down on the subfloor depending on if there's a flooring underneath it or not. So just kind of gauge that based on how yours is set up and go ahead and remove the bolts so then you can go ahead and remove your vanity. So after we have the bolts and everything removed from below, typically these are usually caulked or there's adhesive. Just run a utility knife back here and just cut that like that. Then your vanity should pop straight out like that. So then after you get that done, obviously just simply pull the vanity away from the wall like that and now you've removed your uh, vanity. The next thing we're going to be doing, we're going to be removing the baseboards and quarter round. Depending on where your tile or your floor stops, you may or may not have to remove the baseboard. Obviously, if your flooring's underneath there, you may have to remove that as well. But for sure, you can obviously you can need your quarter round removed there. What I found is these trim pullers. You, these are a great investment if you don't have one. These things will save a lot of time of battling with trim. Essentially what this thing does, you put it down in there and you lift it up you lift it all up like that and it'll pull it out. So you literally push this down in there like that. And you can see how that thing pulls your trim right out. So go ahead and do that and remove all of the trim around the floor there, just like that. So now that we have the quarter round removed, uh, if you notice we left the baseboards up there for now, sometimes when you're doing tile, you can get away with sliding the flooring underneath there because you're able to slide in there and you have a little bit of movement. Obviously laminate and other materials you're using, you might not be able to do that. So we're gonna try to leave the baseboards up there and see if we can get the tile installed there. If not, later on, we'll remove that. But now that we have the quarter round reboot, the next step is we're now going to be tearing up this old tile. You really have a couple options on what you can do. The first is, if you're not familiar with these tools over here, this is a rotary hammer drill. Those things come in very handily. Essentially what that thing is gonna do, it's gonna get under this tile and it's gonna tear that up. If you don't have one of those or if you don't wanna you know, have the extra expense of one of those, you also have the option of a chisel and a hammer as well. Obviously that's gonna take more time, but that option will work as well. So we'll go ahead and get started here and kind of show you what we have to do with this tool here. What you're gonna be doing with this tool here, you wanna first get started. To get started, you know, a lot of times it's easier just to find a little grout area. And once you get into that grout area, and kind of go like this and push it up like that. So sometimes these come up differently depending on if it's uh, porcelain or ceramic, you know, these tiles, sometimes the whole tile will come up, other times it'll chip like this, but the process is essentially the same. So we'll go through removing these and kind of show you guys the process. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, we just hit a couple there. How much easier it is with this tool. You know, again, you can use the hammer and chisel path as well. But if you're not familiar with these, like I said, these things are a good investment for what you're trying to do here. I purchased this one a couple years ago with the battery and everything. I think it's around $100, $150. So once you get in the middle of this, you'll see this thing will take a lot of the effort away. So you're not manually doing it yourself there. So we'll go ahead and continue that same process around here. And we'll be back in a few minutes here when we get this uh, all taken care of. I'll make one, one comment here real quick. Sometimes when you're removing the tile, you can get lucky and the backer board might be in good shape or you might just have to level it up a little bit there. In this case, this stuff is so old, it's crumbling underneath it. So we're, we're opting just to tear up the backer board with the tile. So essentially all you're doing there is you're now just getting your tool underneath the backer board like this on the sub floor. Now be careful with these tools. If you hold them like this, you're gonna be digging down in the subfloor. So try to maintain an angle like this, get underneath the tile, and then you'll pull the backer board up with it as well. So let me give you an example here of what I'm talking about. Wow. 
So after you got all of the tile and the backer board removed, the next thing is we need to get this, you know, surface level so we can put our backer board over there so nothing's going to make it raised in any area. Depending on when you're removing the tile, in the 90s they did adhesive and some of these type of finished nails here to hold it down. You're going to see if you go around along here, you're going to see those all over the place sticking up. The next thing we need to do is we need to go through the floor here and pound in any of those or remove them. You, know, you got a couple methods here. You can, you know, get a screwdriver in here or something like this, and you can pull those up, or you can simply do that. If the backer boards in the last, you know, 10 years or so, or maybe 20 years, obviously they started using some of the backer board screws. In that case, you're simply just going to take your impact and you're just going to zip all those screws off. Obviously, that's a lot easier than what we're dealing with here. But depending on when the tile was installed that you're removing, you may or may not have to do this step here with the nails and adhesive. You might just have to do the screw. So just go through the, the entire area and take care of the nails or the screws for the next step here. The next thing we need to do is we need to get some of this removed. Now, obviously you don't have to remove all of it, but we don't want to have different high spots in here. So when, when we lay our backer board down on here, we want this to be level. So there's a couple options here. You can use one of these type of scrapers like this and just simply get underneath it like that and pull off any of the areas that are kind of high there. Some other options that I've also used in the past, I've actually used a four and a half inch angle grinder and they make you these surfacing diamond cup wheels. And I'll show you a close up picture of these. These are kind of expensive, but I've used one of these for many years on various different projects. And then you're gonna get one of these dust shrouds to put on here where you can hook your shot back on here. So essentially what you're gonna be doing with this you're just gonna be going over all those imperfections like this, and it's very easy. You could go through a whole entire room if the adhesive's on there pretty quick, and you can go through here and do this very, very quick. Now, obviously be careful because this is the subfloor. You don't wanna to get too carried away and grind down your subfloor. The idea is just to kind of make it a smooth transition so you don't have any high spots anywhere. So then just go through the entire area there and remove the adhesive that's on the ground there. And again, just the idea is just to make it, you know, a level surface here. So we're ready for our, the next step, which would be laying the backer board. I'll give you a quick demo here real quick of how this works. If you notice here, we have our shot back attached to you. Know, obviously you're gonna wanna wear a mask and any safety gloves, you know, as well there. If you notice, once I get going here, you know, you start seeing some of these, you know, high spots of some of this adhesive. You're literally just gonna go back and forth there and you're just gonna level those up here. So let, let me show you how this works here. So as you can see, that works very, very quickly. Obviously the key to this thing is keep moving. Don't sit there and, and dwell in one area for very long because obviously you'll burn a hole down in there. But you know, just kind of repeat that whole process whether you're using this method or a scraper. You know, obviously this is a lot quicker a method here with a grinder, but it is possible to do it the other way there. But as I mentioned there before, you don't have to get too carried away and get everything out. But it's a good idea to just run through here and get a lot of these high spots taken down because you know obviously you don't want any high spots. You want this to be pretty level here so we can put your, your back of board down on there and you won't have any imperfection. Now that we have the soap floor all cleaned up, you know, obviously run a shot back and everything through there so everything's clean. The next step you're going to be doing is you're gonna be laying the back of the board. Now to do this, you wanna make sure the way you're laying this, it needs to be perpendicular to your soap floor. So you know if you see this line here, the way that's running, we need to run our boards in the opposite direction there. So to do that, you know, obviously just set it in there like I have there. If you gotta measure around any of these, you know, obstacles like this toilet drain back here, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You just wanna take a measurement from the wall there to up here. So get a measurement there, get a wall from here. That's another measurement. Get one from here to here and get one from here to here. Then you can simply connect those and you can kind of, you know, cut that hole out of there for your toilet there. So that's how you were going to set that in there in the back as far as starting uh, to lay the back of board. To break one of these off on the ends there. So obviously if you do a measurement and you're too long in your room there, you're going to have to shorten up the board. To do that, 
What you're going to need is a straight edge or maybe a level or something to get across that board that's going to help it keep straight. Then they make these tools here, and this is actually something that was found in your hardware store as well. You're simply just going to take this along there and score that. So then after you score, you know, then it's ready to break that piece off there. So keep your weight on the other side of the board, then go ahead and push it forward on the back side, and you'll see how easily it is to break this off. you can just simply go ahead and remove it and then that's how you can shorten the boards where you need to cut along the edge there the next step we have here we're going to go ahead and start putting the screws in there it's important to use the specialty screws that are for this you know these are just the backer on inch and a quarter screws that you'll find in any hardware when you get your backer board you're going to notice there's going to be little hole indentions all around this you need to put quite a few screws in this so just kind of make sure you're doing that you know as you screw these in there you're going to be a little bit away from the wall or as far as the edge over here because obviously you don't want to screw on the very end because you end up breaking it off. So you ain't going to come in a little bit. As far as laying the board, you need to be in a quarter of an inch away from your wall. In our case, we just got it going right up against, you know, the baseboard here. We'll have quarter round over it. But if you're going next to a wall, quarter an inch away from the wall and an eighth of an inch away from additional backer boards that you lay next to this. So then you can just go ahead and you know, start the, the process of putting these down. Now you wanna make sure you sink them in enough so they're not exposed, but don't go too carried away because they obviously, you know, you will, you know, go right through there. So just make sure you have them sunk in there far enough. You continue that process. You know, I'll give you a close up picture of these indentions there. Just go around the edge, you know, and in each individual, you know, hole there and go ahead and, and put your screws in there to get the first board down here as far as the backer board there. After you have all the screws in where you need them, you know, around the board, you know, as you can see, there's quite a few of them that you're going to be doing in all those holes there. So after you get those all in there, the next step you want to make sure is that they're all seated properly. You obviously don't want any of these to be protruding up higher than what they need to be because that could interfere, you know, with your tile. So to do that, simply get a putty knife and just go across every one of your holes like this. And as long as you're not getting hung up on one of them, it's perfectly fine. If you come over here and it stops on you, you obviously know you're hitting that screw, you know, just simply go in there and drive it down just a little bit farther. So go ahead and do that for all the screws that you just put in across the board there. After you get all your, your screws all tacked in there, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and run a shot back across here. And then we're down to our final step you know, on the prep here for the back of board. And what we need to do now is we need to apply some cement board tape on those in interior seams there. Now, what they say is to you know, put the mortar in there or ten set, whatever you use in there before, then put the tape over. What I've usually done is just put the tape on there, then go ahead when I'm, you know, laying the tile. When I get up to this point, I'll pack the mortar in there when I get to that. So you're just going to take this and simply run it across. And this is at any of your local hardwares as well. And it has a self-adhesive and just run it across there. You see, cut the end off then the prep stage for the back of war is now complete. Now we can begin the process of starting to cut and lay our tile. Depending on what thin set you're using, you know, obviously these directions are going to be different. This is the version that we're using here today. Essentially all you need, a pretty powerful drill, and you're also going to need one of the stirring drill bit things here. They can find in a hardware store. You're going to mix it with water based on the directions there. And all you're going to do is you're just simply going to take this in there. you're going to get to the point where it's almost the consistency of peanut butter. Now, what you're going to do is just make sure you clean off, you know, the stirring, you know, that, that you have here. You'll want that drying on there. So rinse it off outside, then you're ready to use your thin set there that you have mixed up. Now that we've had all of the prep done, we have, you know, the back of board lay and everything's ready for the tile installation. What I'm going to be showing here today is how you can use a leveling system. Now, obviously this is optional. You can just as easy to lay these without it. However, if you don't do tile every day, sometimes it's very easy to get them off center. So if you want to ensure that you have a 100% level surface, this is a good option to use. Obviously, it's going to take you more time, but I believe, you know, sometimes it's worth the extra time to, to put that in there. So the first thing you want to do, get a slightly damp sponge, and you're just going to go across the surface here. You're just trying to get any of that extra debris that might be off of there. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to start putting some thin set 
out here so we can begin to lay this up. Now, obviously, you know, depending on your manufacturer that you're using for your thin set, you know, the directions may vary. So just follow what you know, the manufacturer that you're using, just follow what, what they recommend you use as far as trial size and as far as you know, the thin set that, that, that you're using. Now, it's generally a good practice when you're, when you're doing this. You know, I get questions all the time is how should I put the lines here? Should they go like this or should like go like this? What they kind of recommend is if I'm going to lay this long tile like this, I'm going to be laying the lines like this. Now, with that said, I've done them both ways and I don't really see any difference. But if you're following what, you know, a lot of the tile industry says, this would be the way that, that you would lay these in there. So now that we have some of that laid in there, one of the important things with these leveling systems you're going to want to make sure you back butter the tiles. And if you're not familiar with what that is, all you're going to do on your sink is essentially just putting a little bit of mortar or thin set on the back of this tile, just like this. And what that's doing, that's just, you know, allowing more adhesive to grab a thin set that you're laying. So we can go ahead and set that one there. Now, Pay close attention to where your baseboards, your walls. Obviously, you don't want to be flush up against the wall. For us here, we're just out a little bit from the baseboard because we're going to have quarter round coming in here. So we just kind of want to put it there. Then you want to just kind of gently, you know, rock it back and forth just like that. For these tile levelers, these are simply going to go on each one of the corners there. We'll go ahead and set that one in there. And then depending on what size of spacers you're using, you're going to want to start putting those in there, depending on the gap that you're trying to achieve. So we'll go ahead and set those in there like that. And what you're going to do with this leveling system, you're simply going to stick that in there. Now, depending on which system you're using, it could be different, but on this one, all you do You simply get it like that where it's tight and, and then that's it. And sometimes you got to kind of readjust your gap there, especially for this first row. And you're going to want to probably put some spacers in the back like this. So you're not going up against your baseboard as you're moving along there. And that's generally the process. Then obviously keep going. Once we get over here, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be 12 inches. Then we're just going to cut, you know, a six inch over here. So we're going to go ahead and continue a few rows here until we're ready to cut. So I can give you kind of a demo of, of how the wet towel saw works. Then we'll also give you a demo on, you know, how to kind of cut around the, the toilet planes there as well. So we're going to go ahead and do a couple of rows and we'll be back here in a minute. All right. So now we're going to show you how to get around a, the toilet flange there. You know, obviously you're going to line your tile up there next to it and kind of get marks of where you need to be. Probably usually about a quarter of an inch away from the toilet. So then you can see, you know, I just have a simple mark here that I'm going to do. If you can get one of these Dremel saw maxes and they make a little tile blade on there, this is the easiest way I found it to cut these. So then you're going to take your Dremel here and obviously we're going to wear some safety glasses and be careful and do this outside, you know, what you're going to do, but just, you know, let her just follow your line there. And just like that, you have that cut out. Obviously, this doesn't need to be cleaned because, you know, you have your toilet going over there. If you're going to be doing something that is going to be seen, obviously, there's other methods that, you know, I can show you in a later video how to do that. But when you're just getting around the toilet, this saw max here will do the trick there. Just go there, you know, get your holes cut out there on each individual tile around the flange. Then you'll be all set there. All right, now you can see, you know, we have a couple rows done here and then, you know, we've been laying them, you know, similar to the first couple we did there. I'll do a couple more here in a minute here to show you. When I give you an example of what we have to do to cut the ends. On this one, these are just a standard six by 12. So we're just cutting them in half. We're doing a full 12 inch, you know, followed by a six by 12 by a six. So let me show you the wet tile saw I use. Obviously there's various other ones out there that you can use, but I really like this sliding the wet tile saw that I've had over the years. And let me give you a short little demo of what you got to do to cut a tile. So here's the tile saw that we're going to be using here today. 
This is just the, the rigid sliding tile saw. Obviously, you know, as I mentioned there, there's, there's various other models. You know, I've actually liked this one over the years. We'll just give you kind of a, you know, a general demo here of what you got to do. As you can see on here, we can see the, you know, the laser that's here. Obviously this is going to slide up in there and it's going to cut it. You know, we'll just give you a, a quick demo on, you know, how this works. Um. And as you saw there, you know, that's, that's pretty straightforward, you know, cut them in half. There's different things you can do with this saw. You know, you can cut different angles here for what we're doing here today. That is not necessary, but again, it's pretty straightforward. If you're going to be doing a tile job and you might not need to invest in, you know, something, you know, as heavy duty as this, they make all kinds of other little portable versions, but you're going to need some sort of wet tile saw. They make other ways to cut tile, but these will save you a lot of headache in the long run. So I think this is a well justified investment that you're going to be doing a tile job. When you get to your joint here, you know, I'll show you, you know, I mentioned it earlier in the video, as far as packing that, that groove in there, you're just going to want to get a little bit of thin set and just kind of pack it in there. You don't have to get carried away with this. So basically that's all you need to do there. You pack those seams. All right. As you can see, you know, we're kind of a little long here. One note I'll make here real quick. Obviously, as you can see when I'm doing these, I'm not getting very far ahead here in regard to how much thin sets on the ground here because this stuff will dry fairly quickly, right? So if you get a little bit too far ahead of yourself and you find some of it getting hard and drying, do not try to use that because it's not going to adhere, right? What you're going to want to do is go in there and scrape that out. Simply scrape it out with a you know putty knife or something there throw that away, then redo your thin set in there. So that's kind of an important tip to make sure you keep in mind. Just don't get too far ahead of yourself when you're laying these in here. All right, so after you get a few of them in there, you know, as you can see, you need to make sure, you know, you kind of set them in there. You're going to use your leveling system, get level there. Then you're going to, you know, set them completely. So then you're going to put a little bit more pressure on them to kind of set them down there where they need to be. But as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. It's a process, obviously, but as you move along here, you know, you can see it, it's, it's pretty straightforward, you know, once you get the hang of it. Just keep in mind of the, you know, the thin set of how much you're putting on here at a time. And just keep in mind of, you know, maintain your gap. Any additional thin set you have coming up here, you know, what I usually use is just a little screw, flathead screwdriver. Just go in there, you know, get that out of there and wipe it off. You can always wipe it off some of that the next day. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit harder to remove. So it's the best you get as much of it off here today as possible. But, all right, so after you have the tile completely installed there, all your manufacturer's recommendation as far as how long this needs to wait till dry. One I used here was 24 hours. So, you know, after the 24 hours, we're ready to go here. I'll show you here in a second how to remove the leveling system that we used on this bathroom here. Depending on which one you use, you know, obviously that process could be different. If you didn't use them, then obviously then you can skip this next part and just go right into cleaning here. So let me, let me show you what you have to do to get those leveling clips removed. For this specific leveling system here, all you have to do is use a rubber mallet and you're simply going to hit, hit from the sides of these like this, and it's gonna crack those out of there. So I'll show you what you gotta do here. So that's essentially all you need to do. So go around and you're gonna remove them like that. Every once in a while, you'll get a few that won't cleanly break off. All you need to do is just get a needle nose pliers there and then simply, you know, pull them out there. But that is the process to remove these. 
you know, obviously you save these pieces, then all of these, these pieces you go ahead and throw away. So after you get the clips removed, the next thing you want to do is you need to go through all your grout lines and make sure you don't have any thin set that's sticking above the tile here. So here's a good example of one that's a little bit high. To remove that, all you need is one of these grout knives, and these are at any local hardware store there. You're just simply gonna go in there. You're gonna simply go in there like that and, and scrape that out. Now you don't have to get it all the way removed. You just have to get it lower than what the tile is so you can have a, a level of grout over top of that. After you get that done, then just simply take a microfiber towel or any, any towel you have there and wet it down and simply go through all of the, the areas like this and, and just wipe them wipe them clean and obviously any thin set that you have on top of the tile, go ahead and wipe that off as well. So do that throughout the entire floor there, then we'll be ready to start the grout. Now we're ready to start the grout. There's a few things you're gonna need here. You know, obviously you need some some grout. You know, this is this flex color CQ is some stuff I've used for various jobs. I like it. You're gonna need a grout float here. They make different sizes. Here's a bigger one than, you know, obviously you can see back there there's a smaller one I like to use in some of the corners. So you're gonna need that. You're gonna need a couple five gallon buckets and then some sponges. And why you need two of them is one's gonna be your really dirty, you know, sponge where you're doing your first pass. Then the second, you're gonna have a little bit cleaner water that you're gonna use on there as well. So I'll give you a, you know, a quick little demo of how I, I typically like to do this. So the first thing, you know, obviously you'll have to probably stir up, you know, some of your grout there. And you're simply just going to take this like so, and you're gonna just start filling in in the grout lines like that. Now, it's very important if you're doing this yourself, don't get too far ahead of yourself because you're gonna end up having this dry. And depending on what grout you use, sometimes these leave a really bad haze on them that's very, very difficult to get off. So if you're doing this yourself, just don't get ahead of yourself. Just do a, you know, a couple, then, then pause, then go back with your sponge. You know, today I have a helper with me, so it's gonna be a little bit easier on me to do this so I can keep going and you can follow up with the sponges here. So I'll give you a quick demo here of what you have to do with the sponges after you get, after you get that done like that. Now the key, the key to this is you're not trying to dig out any of that grout. You're just trying to go across the actual tile there and get all of this stuff off the top layer of it like that. So once you get a little bit off, go over to your dirty bucket, go ahead and rinse it out very good. Then eventually, once you get a lot of that top grit and a lot of that grout off the tile, you're going to take another pass with your clean sponge. Then after you do your clean sponge, you know, what I found just to kind of clean it up at the very end is take a microfiber towel and you can take that microfiber towel and you can go in there and you can get any remaining residue or haze or you know or any of the grout that's still on the tile you can get it off with this now obviously don't go digging in there on your on your grout with this but you know that's kind of a good way if you have just a little bit of residue left over there as well so that, that is the process there you know like i said if you're doing this yourself don't get too far ahead of yourself if you have a helper you know you can get this done pretty quickly but just go through and you know follow that throughout the floor there to lay the grout in the grout lines all right, so after we get all the grout cleaned up there and we finished in here, you know, like I said, the biggest thing here is just take your time, you know, when you're doing this and make sure you're getting all of that grout haze off the tile. Now, I will say this Map High Flex Color CQ stuff I've used a few times, there's very, very little residue that stays on the tile. So it wipes up pretty easily just with a sponge. I used some Boss Wit grout before and that stuff was terrible with grout haze. Now. Maybe it was, you know, I let it sit too long and it, and it dried on there where I had to use some urethane crowd hazer remover, but that stuff was just really an absolute nightmare to, to use. So I recommend this map eye stuff if you're going to use it. And there's obviously other ones out there, but if you get the Bostic one, just very, very carefully install that and make sure you're really, really cleaning up because that one, we had to spend a whole day, you know, getting grout haze off out the very next day because it was still there. So, you know, again, Patience is the key on here. If you're patient, you follow those those steps there, you know, from start to finish. Obviously, this is the end result here of, you know, the tile. You know, then we'll show you here, you know, the last couple steps here as far as, you know, putting in some of the baseboards, install on the toilet, install on the vanity, then that kind of starts wrapping up our bathroom remodel. So after your grouse dry, the next step that we're going to be doing, we're going to be installing 
the quarter round. Now, obviously, if you took your baseboards off, you need to first put the baseboards on, then your quarter round. But the process is pretty straightforward. You know, I had the old nails that are in there. You're going to want to clip those off. Then you're going to simply want to, you know, nail these back in there. I've used this Milwaukee M18 Brad nailer for many years there. It's been a good tool. You know, obviously, you don't need one this expensive. There's other air tools out there that you can get fairly cheap. Like you're going to want something like that in order to put this down in here. If you do have this, you know, I recommend that you take a look at my other video out there. I give a few tips and tricks on some things with this tool that'll make the job easier for you as far as how to use it and, you know, some different things that will help you along the way. So if you do have this one, take a look at that other video. It might help you out there, but the process is pretty straightforward. Just, you know, press it against there. Then you're going to want to nail these in there. So just like that, go through there and install your baseboards and the work quarter round all around there. Then after you're done with that, then the next thing you're ready to start installing your toilet and your vanity. All right. So after you get all of your quarter round and your baseboards all on there, you're ready to start installing your vanity and your toilet. Obviously in this one here, we're not ready for the paint yet. And we don't even have our vanity yet because it's all back order. So we're not going to be able to show that here today, but I want to give you a, a few pointers here on some of the toilet and the vanity installations. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you are using brand new lines. You know, depending on how old those are, they could be, you know, 20, 30 years, they could be a year old. There's compression fitting washers on those that you need to replace. These are very cheap. So make sure you're getting one of these replaced in there. And the other thing is a lot of these toilets, they come with wax rings. Depending on what you're doing there, you might need to get one of these jumbo ones. And it's just essentially a little bit more wax in there. It's not going to hurt anything if it's too big and it will just squeeze out on the sides there underneath the toilet, but at least everything is covered. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. But then other than that, you know, the toilet installation is, is very similar to the, to the actual removal. You know, obviously we've replaced our line. You're going to install it there. You're going to put the back on there. You're going to run your bolts up through, through those holes. Again, you're going to use a hacksaw to cut them off, then install your cap on there. So once you get to that point, then it's pretty straightforward, you know, finish your vanity and totally then install, then you've basically completed your bathroom remodel there as far as what you need to do. So again, you know, like I said, this is a long process. It's not a hard process. It could be arguably very tedious. However, anyone's capable of doing this, right? So again, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is a very easy DIY job to do. You just have to have patience. Do step by step, you know, make sure you allocate enough time to do it. If you have a couple of helpers, that's always great. That can help streamline the, the process there as well. All right. Well, hopefully that helped you out here today. If it did, you know, please give me the thumbs up. If you're interested in more content like this, you know, please hit that subscribe. But again, I hope this helped you out on your project that you're doing there. And thanks for watching.